Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by one of New York's finest, Hoya Rock from Madball, the Smoking Word podcast. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? Today I'm joined by a man that I think needs no introduction. I'll introduce him anyway, because because the fanfare is what it's about. Hoya Rock, Madball, the Smoking Word Podcast, Casa de Rock. Ah, Chippendales. <laughs> and uh, a Playgirl Sports Illustrated and a couple other things, but yeah. Man, New York's finest. <laughs> there you go. I like to say that now. I'm, I'm repping out of Miami, but always New York City, made always. in New York ways. But I got a lot of love for my South Florida now. I gotta say it's my home, and I and I love it. I I like repping Florida now too, you know. So, well, you know, you got the you get you get the nice winter, you get the the busy, and then you go down to Florida. You got the the retirees, the old folks. Just Actually, chilling. let me tell you, you motherfucking Canadians are down here, boy. <laughs> a lot of you motherfuckers end up here. Let me tell you, in fucking Hollywood, I know. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> I know already. I know. I, listen, we know that, that the Canadians up there, especially that there's like folk tales about, you know. You get the they get the French newspaper and the little bat down there. You already know <laughs> not, but it's, it's cool. But um, yeah, nah, it's cool down here and shit. Like I, I'm I'm out here now, so it's cool. Like I get to I, I miss sometimes I miss wearing boots and hoodies, but I can always put the air conditioner up if I want. So I'm good with that. Right. You get that one freak cold spell that comes through like for one yeah, day you know, out of the like don't kid yourself and, and it gets for you know it, it's for a couple of weeks a year where you you get frost mm-hmm. like you'll get fucking a hoodie where you need but I mean it's it's whatever it's not like everywhere else but you get a little taste of it and out here the minute that happens you could tell the girls bring out furs, <laughs> fucking um, l- Uggs, lugs, whatever the fuck, everything, because they they want to wear it all mm-hmm. year, and Florida's just hot, you know, so. See, that's the one blessing about having the winter, is you get to wear all your cool, like, layers, you get the beanies, you get yeah. the, you get your, your, your Zulu hoodies and stuff, you know. Absolutely, but living down here in the heat, you guys don't get to see what I see sometimes <laughs> fucking around. <laughs> And that's people in dental floors. So, so <laughs> but whatever, that's just me. You know, yeah. if you're in, that's if you're into it. I, you know, you got the you, you're down there with them South Florida vibes. <laughs> exactly, I'm here for a reason. But there's palm trees and, and and thongs. You might find me flowing around, freaking walk. You know, walking my sons or something. So going to South Beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't even end up that. Mm-hmm. I, to be honest, with you, I'm in my motherfucking cave. All I do is grind on my podcast, grind on the on the web channel, and and take care of my kids. You know, it's it's a lot of work, so I'm busy with that shit always. You you're always grinding. You're always on Instagram Live. I check in, you know, when I can. Yeah. See your organic coconuts in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. I start doing that more now because also um, I, I it's crazy because as much as I'll try to be uh, active on social media I, daily, people are like. Oh, yo, you have a podcast? Oh, you sell merch? And I'm like, yo, I, I'm sick of hearing myself on it, but I know how it works. <laughs> it's the same, unfortunately, the same, you know, 50, 60 people that got to hear it because that's the way it works online and whatever. But when I do lives, I get different people, different mm-hmm. time zones, and I get to tell them about, hey, we just dropped the show. Like, again, nobody's going to do it for us. Nobody did it for us. Nobody ever did it for us. And nobody probably will do it for us. Until then, I'll do it myself. Yeah. It's that word of mouth. You, it comes from that DIY, that hardcore mindset. Yeah. yeah. Just and, gotta and make it happen. Believe me, I, I love it to, to get to a point where, you know, I could put out a blast and then media is going to do that. I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't hate on nothing that blows up, but I don't got that. So mm-hmm. I'm not just going to not do something that I like to do because I, I, this dude ain't, you know, giving me what, what this guy has and that guy, and I don't got what this guy has. I do me. 
I, I make it happen. You know what I mean? And that's, that, that's one. I'm a lucky guy that I, I got that grind in me and I got a lot of friends. And when you have friends, you can make shit happen. You just got to, you know, hit the accelerator on it. You know what I mean? That's it. That's it. Grind until it happens. And then when it happens, yeah. you grind more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't talk about it. My, my boy, Double O, rest in peace, used to say, yo, don't talk about it. Be about it. And when you learn, a lot of people talk about it. How many people really stick it out? People don't understand when you see somebody, if somebody does, I saw something recently that made the most sense. They say, you know, when you ever see somebody do something really good, somebody shoot a jump shot, somebody, you know, hit a hockey puck, somebody who looks in shape. Yeah, you're seeing the the, the, the finished product or the product to what, you didn't see what it took to get there or all the hours it took to make something look that easy. Yeah. You know, like you said, like, you know, your setup, you know how to turn on your setup and do that. And once because you, you've done it a trillion times, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and it's crazy. It's crazy. It's what it's the 10,000 hours, right? The 10,000 hour rule to be an expert. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and that whole shit, it's like, you know, and it's like, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's just putting that time in, you know, put in the you work. put in time, you know, uh, things get better, like anything, you know, you, 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 you. And also, you got to make a statement, you know, with what you do. Like, you got to show, you know, people invest time in you, you know, and it works slow. People sometimes, you know, like anybody, there's, there's, there's shows I never liked. And then to somebody, enough people told me to check it out. Then I check it out. And I said, yo, you know, I watched two episodes. I'm going to watch the season. Yeah. Now I'm invested. Now I'm like, all right, motherfuckers, I want season two. I want to know when. Same thing. I get it. It's consistency mm-hmm. like everything. You know what I mean? It, this game at least and like with a band and anything with communication right and you when you're putting something out there that's consistency is the key and, yeah. and just being regular and on on your time about it yeah if you want ears a, a, a consistent amount of certain of ears to listen to you then yeah that's important if you don't care if anybody listens to you then it doesn't matter right. but i think we do this because we want as many ears as possible obviously of the same minded people. That's why we do it. You know, exactly. like build a community. Know. That's it. Exactly. I'm like, again, nobody did it for us. You know, like I shout out always the metal guys and all that shit, because they have all that. They had the, the metal gold, the metal guy awards and all the big networks and good. We don't, nope. you know, not just New York hard, like hardcore, even punk has that. Cause California has a lot of juice. Just, you know, with media and everything being there. So even the punk bands, real punk bands, have big, huge platforms, you know? Because yeah. they just happen to be in the right place. And it's just what it is, you know? But um, somebody, like, on the grittier side, I was like, I, I basically, you know, um, you know, I, I, love, I love to be able to talk to our people, meaning anybody who likes anything alternative, you know what I mean? Like, you know... Like, it's good to have a place where there's a little of everything. Yeah. Like, I remember watching, you know, I used to have to watch, uh, 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 you know, if it was uh, uh, Headbangers Ball, watch fucking whatever, an hour, two hours of bullshit to see one video at the end. Yeah. I said, you know what? Let me do that for our people but without two hours of bullshit. Let me give them a, a shit, everything we like. If it's graffiti, hardcore metal, you know, uh, uh, um, tattooing you know, extreme sports, MMA, shit I love, you mm-hmm. know, and stuff that our community fucks with. So I was like, and shit that we've been doing and covering and, and people from our world already been in before social media. Right. That's why I have so much love for the hard corner. Just putting yeah. that shit out there, everything that you're you're seeing or interested in, upcoming shows, upcoming bands, yeah. man. It's all about the shout outs, all about showing love to, to people who are out there doing it. Yeah, yeah, because I my, my whole thing is this is like I get it. All right, you don't gotta like you know everybody likes New York Hawk or not everybody likes Mambo, not everybody likes me, not everybody likes the people I, I'm with, and that's cool. I don't care. But I love the movement, I love the culture of it, and I'm always curious on what's what's going on around the world. And I said, What better than our world to give our world shine? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I at least I feel I'm gonna do it justice in the in in the way that not because, oh, I'm very good. Not, not in my, you know, I got my GED. I'm a fucking gorilla. My point is this, that I love the shit and I live the shit. So I know whatever you can, whatever comes out of me, if you like it or not, it's coming sincere mm-hmm. and from a real place. 
and from somebody who lives the shit. Because I live this shit. You know, I mean, no matter what, I live this shit. My, my, my wife, rest in peace, I met her through this. My sons came out of this. Everything I have is because I do music. I'm doing this because I do music. You know, everything. Everything mm-hmm. comes back to this shit. So, you know. That's, the, that's that lifer shit. Yeah, and, I, and that's where that came up, too. It's like, it, we don't just say it as some slogan. Like, we said that back in the day. Like, yo, we lifers, because, no, we we here. Mm-hmm. We got nowhere to go. So, you know what? We're going to make, like, like life, you know, they do. They make jail where they thrive. Mm-hmm. Okay, they, okay, this ain't a jail, but we're going to thrive. And, and, and what people, some people, you know, in this world are like, feel like, oh, you know, we got nowhere else to go. Guess what? We don't want to go nowhere else. We can make noise from here and let motherfuckers know where the fuck we at. You know what I mean? So that's right. That's right. Yeah. You know. I'm a I'm a shout out some coffee that I'm drinking. Uh are you what do you have going on on your side? Well, it's funny you shall say right now. I just actually finished because I don't drink after five o'clock. Right. Because I go to sleep early. <laughs> but right now I got some OG Bustello. That's some real Oh stuff. damn. Like, <laughs> you know that. This is the second time somebody's had Bustello. I think episode two with my man Nolan uh, from Vatican. Um, oh. He was he had some Bustello on too. So yeah, the so Bustello's big northeast for sure, especially Latin, but even oh, yeah. every Italian and, 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 and Spanish Latin, but northeast Bustello, and, and it really is for uh, you know a supermarket coffee. Probably one of the best ones. Not the exotic stuff that they're great to, all that shit. I look at right before I'm always a Bustello guy, but I, I've been on this um that Gervalia shit. Exactly. I used to see the commercials for it and I used to laugh because it was like the guy in the blade in the suit, you know, with the hot <laughs> girl, and like he you know, he's like some fly guy with some hot girl, and he's like Gervalia, and they drink it on the jet. Long story short, I saw two for one one day in the supermarket. I said, okay, let me get it. And I and I kind of fell in love with it. So, but it's legit. You're, you're on that classic coffee taste, that classic espresso. Yeah, yeah, I like that, but I'm game. I'm not I, I'm not a hater. There's some guys, oh, I just do this. I, I'll try the other shit. But I like uh, I'm a bold, I like bold coffee, like taste. And I need, like, I drink that shit because I want to feel it also. So yeah. I definitely... I, I'm a buzz guy, but I'm a I'm a lover. I do love coffee. I really do, you know. Well, I, I have respect for the classics, but I'm definitely one of the more new wavy, weird coffee people. I'm you want drinking, berries in your shit, right? Like you yeah, want like, I want like weird fruity notes and shit like that. Yeah, exactly. Which I don't hate, but my problem with some of the fruity notes, they just tend to be sometimes lighter. Mm-hmm. I tend to drink with milk. Yeah. Now I drink with oat milk because I got an old stomach, but you know, but I like that. So that's why I like a bowl because with the with the when I with the milk and whatever when I drink, just black for the taste. I like something fruity because I can mm-hmm. taste it. I can literally exactly taste the notes on and be like, I get it. You know, especially in like some of those drip, like when they do the fancy pour overs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's it's great for that for espresso. Not so much. You need yeah, something yeah, a bit yeah. heavier. I'm drinking coffee from it's Escape Coffee Roasters here in Montreal. Uh, it's called The Bomb. Oh, get out of The but Bomb. It's in, it's in French, The Bomb. <laughs> That's a dope bag. That's cool shit. Uh, but it's like a Brazilian coffee. It's a little bit on the darker side. I didn't realize it was like an espresso coffee, and I made drip, and now I, I'm not going to sleep for eight hours. Exactly. That's uh, my problem. Drink that heavy shit. And I again, five, I got to stop because I, you know, I'll be fucking, uh, that shit stays in me. I'm not one of those people that they could see sleep through the night with it. You know, it affects me nowadays. It's crazy. Yeah, I usually cut it off at five. If I don't have a coffee by like four or something, I'm not doing a yeah, second same one. Thing. If it's 520, I'm already like, nah, that's it. I'm already like scared a little because it throws me on my routine and shit. And I'm up very early because I try to train real early. Now nah, this it's like, so I kind of got it worked out where five o'clock is a cutoff. So this coffee is interesting because it's it's like a they process it where they're roasting it. They coat it in sugar. It's called uh, Torrefacto. Wow. I, I don't. I this is the first I'm learning about. I had to look it up. Uh, but it kind of has like an orange taste on top of like that chocolatey. Like, yeah. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But it's not really. It's like a an older style of of making espresso, I guess. 
Yeah, wow, well, I never heard that. Sugar, huh? I've never been heard. I there... have a good coffee spot by me where they get their coffee. It's it's very, very good coffee. It's a Peruvian bean. But what's really cool about it, I like it in every way. It's um uh, uh farmed by by um women. All mm. women that they they gave them jobs that were like, you know, um um this spot where it wasn't nuns, it was just women that needed work, single yep. mothers. And it's but it's a very big like uh, um um what do you call it, operation they have now, and it's fucking it's a good quality too. It's a very high quality, and it helps the women, and it's and it's empowered a lot of. I mean, it just coincidentally did that. I I'm yeah. not going to sit here and be like, oh, I specifically did that because <laughs> of the more. It, but it, it was connected to a cool thing, and I like the idea of the of, of the women just touching my beans. <laughs> you know, I, t- I tell him, I said, listen, you know, if anybody got to touch my, my stuff, at least have a bunch yeah. of hardworking women. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> women <laughs> touching your beans. Uh, if somebody got to touch my beans, let it be hardworking Peruvian uh, bean picker ladies. That that's cool. The I like those co ops that they do. Um, they they've been doing them in in Colombia and and yeah. also uh, Ethiopia has got a few. Actually, Ethiopia and Kenya. I've tried what? from a co-op that's really, really good. Um, yes. But that's something that's cool about specialty coffee and some of that more like weird third wave shit is they invest a lot into like the local economies and communities yeah. where somebody like, I mean, cough, cough, Folgers or somebody will come in, pay low wages and yeah. get unethical coffee, basically. So, yeah. You know, my mother, rest in peace, was from Nicaragua, so she grew up with a lot of, you know, a lot of co- tobacco and coffee in there. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, so you know, look at coffee is mad cheap there. The problem with the whole thing with coffee, as you know, and any real coffee people know, is it's packaging and and packaging where it's not going to mold by the time it gets from point A to point B. America and America got the worst, the shittiest coffee standards. They let the mold come through. That's the problem. They go, yeah, you could buy a coffee farm for whatever. Okay, now you got to get it from Guatemala Mm -hmm. to America. Okay, what you got to do, you got to pay. You got to, you know, uh, uh, you know, process or do whatever you got to do. And now to get it airtight. Yeah, that's a big thing because the mold and since America has such a low standard with the mold, they'll let everything come through. And why pay that that other shit when you, you know, that so it becomes that. And I learned a lot about that because I love it. Yeah. And there was a real great show that got taken off the air was called On Dangerous Grounds. And it was great. A guy, some coffee dude, you could probably still see it on YouTube and I recommend it. And he coffee love. He goes around and talks about and he like he goes into Brazil and he goes into the jungle because he's looking. Um, long story short, uh, Mario Vitale, the, the famous chef, is opening a restaurant. He goes, I want to find an espresso that nobody has. This guy goes all over the world. He goes into Brazil, goes into the jungle, finds a farm, a family, you know, hard, yeah. you know, poor family. He's like, first he, he gets there. They, you know, there's some of them, you know, you could tell poor but working. And then they have an old style Italian roaster that he's like, yo, this had to come from back in the days. Long, and then he's roasting and he's like, look at this. And he gets like some of the best coffee. Then he's like, OK, now I got to bring it back. And then he explains the process. And then that's kind of the whole show premise where he also had to do that in the, in Asia, bring mm-hmm. coffee back. And then it was military stuff and this yeah. and paying people off. And wow, you like for coffee? It's like crazy, you know? Yeah, I got to find this show. That sounds crazy. It's great. And it like it schools you. And like, you know, I learned like, you know, the first coffee, where the first coffee is, you know, they say Yemen. Yemen is the, the, the home place of the first coffee, they mm-hmm. said, you know, Java, that area, this and that. And then they said the queen, I think it was the queen for Paris of France was like, I want, she had coffee, said, I want that. And the first greenhouse was to grow coffee. Pretty crazy. Like some, yep. some something like that, more or less. It was pretty, we had to do with coffee. So go, go figure. Some some royalty wanted something that they couldn't get. Sounds so they, familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I know that you like the coffee in the morning. I see you on the on the Instagram. You're you're getting your uh your morning stuff done. Um what goes into that morning routine? I know that you've been getting fit 
uh, it took a lot of energy over the pandemic for me to decide to start taking care of myself. What, what inspired you to get, you know, like get healthy and get fit? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, long story. So, you know, I've always been a big guy and a, and a while ago, I basically did, you know, I was diagnosed with, with having diabetes and shit. Mm -hmm. So they had put me on pills and I was on the pills for like two months till I ran out. And then I said, I'm going to get off and do it naturally. I ate good for a month and forgot about it. Not forgot about it, but, you know, slack. That was seven years ago, five, six, seven years ago. During the beginning of the pandemic, just around that time frame, I started fucking, um, I'm, I'm having pains in my back. And I said, okay, there's the diabetes. That's it. I was I already knew I had to work. I was getting heavy and stuff. I always knew I had to work on, you know, getting healthier or whatever. My mom's was um, uh, battling cancer at the time and I was taking care of her. I'm a single father. My I, my wife, rest in peace, passed away many years ago when my son was one and a half because she passed the cancer too. So my mother was raising my son as like a mother. So now she's, you know, dying. And I know that's it. Now all he got is me. You know, my father alive, but I said, that's it. So I was like, I got to get, I, I, that's it. It's wartime. Like now I got, I got no excuses. I can't leave my, and one, I don't want my son to be an orphan. The way I keep going, I'm going to leave him an orphan right. and I'm not going to do that. So while I was taking care of my mother, plus I was stressed, you know, pandemic start, started, you know, nobody knew we would ever work again, play again. My mother's sick, you know, uh, everything. So I started hitting the heavy bag, jogging in place, you know, and just little by little started fixing my thing. And then when I got checked out, I started really dialing in on my diet, eating clean and, and training. Then when I went back to the doctor, they basically said, hey, you know, you're borderline diabetic. And I'm like, what do you mean borderline? They're like, yeah, you're close. And I said, I was diabetic. I kept training, training. I came back. She goes, I don't know what you're doing. You, know, you ain't diabetic no more. Every time I went back, she goes, that shit's not even nowhere near, you know, and and then basically I, I lost, I, I was just, you know, hitting the bag and kind of jogging in place. And then um, I started lifting weights about a year ago. And that's what, that's where I found my shit. Now, like as far as um, that shit keeps me sane and focused, like, you know, um, on top, you know, to do it just mentally, I get it now. I used to yeah. think those well, full of shit that would say, you know, the gym and mentally and you zone on helps you think. Now, I, 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 that's the only reason I'm there at five in the morning because I never want to wake up at that time. Yeah. Never. At one day that I'm on there, that I'm there like, yeah, I'm ready. No, once I'm in there, um, it's on. I'm, you know, but getting to that point, I'm not. But I know that's what I got to do to get it done. Mm -hmm. And there's no choice. I got, I got no choice. My son, I need, I need to see my son get old yeah. by all means necessary. So that means I go to the gym at four in the morning every day till I die. So that's what that means. And that's it. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. He saved me. My son's saved me. You know, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. We... But I mean, I remember seeing a video. It was that first park show. Uh, towards when the pandemic was kind of let up or whatever, it was at Johnson Square. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, "The Hoya get replaced in Madball." Yeah, yeah. I remember reading the comments, and they were like, "No, that's him." It's like, what? Yeah, yeah. And that was my lightest. I was about two hundred pounds. I'm two hundred and forty pounds right now. I was two hundred. I was. Low. That's before I started lifting weights. Mm -hmm. You know, and people were looking at me. You know, and I felt good. You know, but people were like. You know, very close people with me were like, I was like, yo, I want to see if I can hit like 190 something just for the point. They were like, nah, you good. You good. And, I was, and they started, then I knew I was getting borderline starting to look sick and I didn't want that. But I saw pictures of myself and I said, look at the size of my head. And I said, man, I look weak. I never forget that. I really I look I thought I looked flimsy, mm -hmm. you know, not sick. But I remember being like, whoa, like every angle I looked. And I remember looking at Mikey, my drummer. He, he's my proof. I was looking at a picture and I was like, ooh, I felt a little like the opposite. Usually in pictures, you think you look heavy. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I look fucking sunken in. 
I look at Mikey, I go, yo, I got to get big. Not like, I, I don't need to be ripped, but like, I need to look durable. Like, yeah. I was, I go, yo, I got to get big. I go, well, I'm going to the gym when I get home. After that park show, I signed up for the gym and I haven't stopped. So whatever the amount of time that's been, that's how long I've been in the gym. And and for me, it's it, it's doing me good, you know, health-wise yeah. and focus-wise even more, you know. So. It's good for the mental. It's it's so good for your mind getting up I, and, and doing that. I swear. All jokes aside, I you know, I'm, I'm sure now I, I feel like, yeah, I could tell I got some size and I gained some size. I didn't know. I, I didn't know till we took pictures. I did some shows back. We we played a show. Um, I think it was um I was somewhere with the band on that when we did a couple of shows back. Mm-hmm. And I had a pin a picture, and then somebody was like, yo, you look like you got a bit. And I was like, I because I, I just knew going to the gym, I was going to line, I felt good and I know I was dropping weight, but I wasn't really looking like that at myself. Mm-hmm. I know I was dropping weight and feeling strong. I was more look, I'm focusing on, man, I, I want to get all these lifts good, my form good, you know, let me stick with my routine, let me make right. sure I'm doing it, don't fucking dyke out, don't, don't bitch out, you know, I'm focused on that and then later on I started seeing Oh shit! Okay, I'm seeing some gains from it, and then that's the plus, mm-hmm. you know. So my main thing is I gotta get there, so it clears my brain, and I need my brain clear. And to keep my brain clear, I need my body working right, because I need my brain clear because I gotta take care of my son. Right, I need my shit working. Period. So I need everything that makes my brain work to be working as good as I could get it by all means necessary. So that means going to this fucking dumb, stupid ass gym at fucking five in the morning every day. So that means I'm at the gym at four in the morning. I live 10 minutes from the gym. So I'm, 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 let me explain this. So you're like, why? Yeah, why? Because if I don't, I'm going to stay in my bed and say five more minutes, 20 more minutes. Yeah. So you know what I know? I know myself and we all know ourselves and we all lie to ourselves. Yeah. Nobody knows ourselves better than that. You know when you're making an excuse or when you legit can't do something. That's when you got to say to yourself, stop being a bitch. <laughs> and it ain't like, oh, I do that on some hard shit. No, I no. got to tell myself, yo, stop being a bitch. Yeah. Because you got to do this. And you're not making yourself, yo, I got to go, um, you know, watch another fucking episode of Game of Thrones. I got to watch another fucking hockey game. No. I got to go to the gym and make sure I stay alive another fucking day longer. Well, that's what I think, because all I care about is living longer, see my sons get big. That's all. I don't give a fuck. Everything in between is bullshit. I need my sons to be as good as I could get them. When they're good and good, then I then I worry about me. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's that motivation. Keeps it. Yeah. It keeps Unfortunately, I don't have something as motivating, so you're calling my my bitch ass out too. Yeah, yeah, no, but everybody <laughs> has something. They don't know. It don't always got to be your kids. Right. And people, some people say, you know, I don't got kids, and I don't got that. But you know what? Everybody has. We all have two. I think everybody has two things, and you at least got one. You got people that love you, and you got people that hate you. So you got two reasons. Right there. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's the highlight right there. <laughs> I hear motherfuckers all the time. Oh, I don't got nobody. Oh, so that means if you don't got nobody, but then it, so you say there's people that don't like you, then, then there's also people. All right, then do that to fuck you to them. That's who you do it because they want to see you fail. That's it. Yeah, prove Period. them wrong. Prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. You got to make your own. Again, people, some people want to be hand, hand walk through life. Mm-hmm. I look at it, took me looking way into my 40s to, to, to actually get my health together. It took family members dying. It took me being a sick. It took a lot. So I know what it is, but everybody got a reason. You see these memes and memes and little motivation guys. The one dude's the best. He says, find your why. That's a real reason. Why? Why? Yeah. Why to shut you up, to make you proud, to make me proud, to shut myself up because I know I could do it. Look at, you know. There's always a reason. Yeah, 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 for sure, you know. There's a trend. Uh just to just to shift gears a little bit. Uh Toby has gotten this. Vinny Stigma has now gotten this. What is the deal with the mad ball tattoos on the head? 
Oh, um, it's not even a thing. It's just, I think it just, people see it as a good spot for it. You know, it was never a thought out thing. The first mad ball on the head was that I see was my boy Dougie from, he was down, he's down with Cold His Life, you know, Detroit crew. Yep. And down by law video, real quick, you see a guy point at his head and you see the mad ball tattoo. That was the first time I ever saw a mad ball tattoo and a guy get it on his head. And um, yeah, it just, I don't know, they're crazy. And also, um, they love the band. And, and and again, I've heard that from other people. They would always say, get a mad ball on your head. I don't know, I guess. Is it, yeah. It's almost like wearing your own band's t-shirt. You can't get you can't get a mad ball oh, tattoo. Yeah, can. But Absolutely. everybody else can get The but only it's... guy who gets away with it is Mike from Suicidal Tendencies. They all rock their own shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we don't do that. That's some that's also, I think, some Northeast shit. Like Yo, you don't rock your own shit. You know That's what I mean? That's it. That, that, it came down the East Coast. You never wear your own band, especially playing. You never, never. play in your own bands. You never see me. I'll see my podcast. You never see me no mad ball shit. And, and when you see us in mad ball shit, it was usually from back in the day. And that was because there was no, we had no money to do laundry. And yeah. we would get... <laughs> They rock that shit, yeah. So that's the one. That's the one excuse. You got no more laundry. Day. Yeah, but those days, yeah, we don't do that. We always like, yo, it's a weird thing, you know. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's, turn it inside out. Yeah, and it's, I got some cool pieces that I'm like, but I get them and give them to my sons. But I'm like, fuck, this would have been dope. Like, you know, like a cool jersey or something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a like a mad ball baseball jersey. Yeah, uh, one of those shits, but. But does this mean that you guys get y'all have to get like a H2O or a, uh, an agnostic front tattoo on the head? <laughs> no, I'm not getting nothing on my big ass and <laughs> shit. Forget it. But I'm actually it's funny you say that. I actually want to get my my boots, my AF boots. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely always wanted to get that. I'm gonna get them. You know, and I'm actually gonna get a mad ball tattoo. I never got one. I want to get a little mad ball. I might have Steve Huey, the guy, my he's my, one of my brothers, and actually the guy who drew it on Set It Off. He's a tattoo artist out of New York. I might have him do a little one on me. and I But I want the AF boots because um, AF's part of my DNA, yeah. you know, that's like, you know. They're the OGs. Yeah, yeah. And for me, they just, it's just what it is. It's Murphy's Law, Agnostic Front, Cro-Mags, you know. That, and, you know, sure, the rest of the game, but like, that's like, right there you know mm -hmm. with everybody else in between you know from the, oh, all the classics I, I liked it all you know i when i came up i was at all that shit i loved it all i didn't give a fuck what you ate what you looked at what coast you came from you know i, I loved it all you know what i mean if it was you know instead if it was sheer terror you know if it was chain of strength if yeah. it was fucking yeah you know um um um, um crumb suckers I was like, yo, if this shit's got some fuck attitude and people are jumping around and, and the shows are going to be wild, I'm in. Yep. That's you what know? draws you is that, is that adrenaline, man. It's that like everybody's yeah. together, shouting yeah. the lyrics, jumping on each other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what I think. I think, you know, you know, you get everybody. It's like when you do a wave at a, at a fucking sports event or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, yeah, I mean, you don't know how to do it, but there's the energy. You feel you have to because you feel the energy and you don't want to be that asshole. Yep. And it just does it. But, um, yeah, now nah, it's a cool thing, man. It's a cool thing. Moving to Florida. Yeah. You've been there for how long now? About eight years, I think, or some shit like that. I love it. Ooh. What was what was the, the force behind that? You know, always, um, that's every New Yorker's like first kind of thing like you know because it's it's realistic paradise mm -hmm. you know you could drive to it it's affordable and it's palm trees and beaches but it ain't an island and you know it's you know it's one of those things but um i always wanted to go there and be somewhere where you know i i lived in front of, of literally a train like my whole life like a train would pass by like the long island railroad mm -hmm. like a wall in front of my and a train so I, I say I want the opposite. I want that the effect of me living like, you know, if I was living, you know, the old school idea of of a of, of, of fantasy life. You know, not only a big mansion, I don't got a big house, a regular bullshit house, nice and regular house, but palm trees, weather, this beach, everything in that life. Cause I came from an urban jungle yeah. and I didn't want my kids there. And 
one of the big reasons was my wife, one of her requests when she was passing was she said she, she saw my old neighborhood in Queens and she said, promise me you don't raise my son here. Promise I wouldn't. So I said, boom, now's our reason I couldn't get out here. And then we said, let's, let's make a change. I thought it will do my parents good too. You know, um, get a couple more years of life out of them. Mm-hmm. Slower, slow, slower living than New York weather and stuff. So, but I love it. I love it. I see. I, I love watching the videos where you're like, that the backyard is like the palm trees and yeah, yeah, it's quite, you know, again, for those moments, for a picture, for a live, that's everything. Cause that's where I want to be. When I would be like at home in front of this train, I would say, man, what I would do to just be in front of that. I don't care what's behind it. I don't care if I'm just sleeping in a one bedroom, whatever. Okay. But I'm not in front of that fucking train (laughs) where fucking, or or people in the corner, pissing on the corner every day. For my kids to be playing and have to see dudes' dicks out all day, I don't want to see that shit. No. And that and that happened. I ain't an exaggerate. I lived off a of main road, and there was a corner where everybody pissed. It was fucking crazy, like literally, God no damn. exaggeration, all day. And it's like, yo, you know, I'm like, this is where I'm gonna bring my. This is where I came up. I'm like, you know, so I'm here now. Fuck that. Yeah, nice slower p- pace of living. I know. I'm yeah. sure there's nobody pissing on the corner of your house. Not- not in my neighborhood. I, and I, and okay, there's a gun. There's a gun law, so motherfuckers better move quick. <laughs> uh, talking about your son, talking about coffee. I saw recently a video. Your son <laughs> made uh, made your your cappuccino, and he did a barista design. What is what is the barista design? Listen, is is three dots of death. I don't know. This came, he goes, look, I made a design for you. I was dying. I was like, well, yeah, it's a start. So it was the three dots, but I was laughing. It starts like, with three dots. In turns, you know, next week he's going to have a swan for you. <laughs> I was going to say, it's going to look like fucking uh, the cover of, of Set It Off with my record pretty soon. Like, <laughs> But yeah, I told him the other day to make it. Now he makes me good coffee. That's the one I was drinking before. Yeah, yeah. I know, and being on the oat milk, uh, uh, we have a saying on the podcast. I, I tell everybody, no matter if it's in coffee or cereal or wherever you want, oat milk is the way. It's yes, the, it's the truth. I agree. I'm an oat milk um, fanatic advocate. I back it. You know, on top of that, you know, um, you know, um, milk just fucks with me. One, mm-hmm. number two, yeah, you know. It, it does leave the cows alone in another way. I'm not like, you know, I, I'll be lying and say that, you know, I do eat meat, you know, but I also, uh, I, I have feelings, you know, if we could cut one thing out, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. suctions on these poor fucking udders and all that <laughs> shit, we don't need to. But the reality is when somebody put it, it's like, you know, um, why are we drinking, a, a, you know, we drink our mother's milk. Yeah. To- and then why are we drinking another animal's milk? You know, I get it. And the fact is that that shit did fuck with me. It's and, weird. Yeah, and oat milk, it when especially when you if you use it with other things, it's you, you can't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, you may if you're if you're using it for like say chocolate milk or you're using mm-hmm. it in a protein, you ain't gonna tell the difference. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. You know. What's well, even I for back- me? The regular like cow's milk used to if I just drank it by itself, it used to make me sick, like throw up like it would gross me out. Yeah. But the oat milk tastes more like it doesn't taste like really nuts. It tastes softer and a little bit sweet. But it doesn't gross me out like the other like cow's milk used to do. So that's like and I, I didn't get on that until a couple of years ago. I loved cow's milk, but it started fucking with me. Mm-hmm. It definitely fucked with me. And then when oat milk, you know, I would do the almond thing and I would float around all that bullshit. And then my boy Dom, shout out to my boy Dom, he goes, he brought up oat milk and it sounded nasty. I'm like, <laughs> oat milk? I'm like, that don't even sound, that sounds like disgusting. He goes, yo, it's even better with your coffee. He goes, it's better than the other shit. It's like milk. You can foam it. Mm-hmm. And then when we were on tour, he was filling in on guitar. We were in Germany. And and what a friend of ours over there's a barista. He said, "Stop by the shop," and I had my first oat milk there, and I was sold. Ever since then, that's all I use, and that's all I drank. You know, and mm-hmm. now in my fridge, that's all I use with everything. You know, if it's m- milk, I use the oat milk. So. It's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah. Um, 
I have a couple of, of questions about hardcore. Uh, not, not that this is about hardcore or anything. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Let me, let me get your top three up, like on the rise bands that you've been on. On the rise bands. Well, there's a lot of bands where, um, I don't even know they consider them new, new now, but you know, I'm on that mind for shit lately a lot. Yeah. You know? and I don't know if you consider them new anymore. And there's new bands that, I'll be lying if I sit around and say, oh, yo, I'm listening to Scowl all day. But I, I like what they're doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, style-wise, sonically, I like, like, uh, um the bad, where they're picking their, their influences from is from that old batch of the punk hardcore shit, yeah. which was getting used. Everything was becoming the metalcore part, which I love, too. But it's different than the knock loose part of the hardcore. Now you got the scouts on the, not now and the gulches who I heard those type of, so I like the energy of those bands and I like um, the well, they were picking their influences from. So I was fucking with them a lot, but I'm on that mind for shit. I like that drain shit. I like that. Um, 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 who are these cats from California? Uh, I mean, from um, um, Australia, um, 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 speed. Yeah, speed. I'm I'm fucking with those guys too. You know, I like the energy. It reminds me a lot of how you know a lot of my era. Yeah, and I ain't gonna be that old guy like that, but it was that same type of energy, you know. So, oh, I like that that gang called Speed. It's like that yeah. that mentality. Is, it's it does take it back to like that that nineties like. Yeah, yeah, and all these a lot of bands that end it, and there's a lot of these young young bands yeah. that got a lot. You know, there's some good shit out there, man. And that's why I love doing the show because the show it, it opens my eyes and gets new music thrown in my laps, and I'm mm -hmm. like, oh shit, you know, there's some real cool shit out there, man. I'm psyched on, you know. So I like that 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 you're on Drain too, because uh, a lot of people will be like, I mean, Drain's blowing up. I mean, that's undeniable. But some yeah. people are like, well, that's crossover. It's like, but it's good crossover. Yeah, so. it's good. what isn't you know? And like you know, like I said again, we could go from a knock loose show. To a fucking, uh, uh, you know, uh, a drain show to a, like we just said, a goat show mm -hmm. to a fucking, you know, uh, section hate show. You know, you get different vibes of all that. You know, it's like, it, it, it's a good place, man. Instead of mm -hmm. everything sounding like one thing, you know, who wants yeah. that? You know? It's funny that you bring up Knocked Loose. I just saw their show last week. I don't know if you've seen the tour that they're on. It's no, I them dying fetus. Terror, and yeah. then the new the new cats Omerta. Yeah, crazy, crazy. It's, being at that show was like weird but cool. Yeah, yeah, it was a mixed batch of people, huh? Yeah, like, and you could see like who was there for who, and like it all kind of intermingled. So when Terror comes up, all the Terror fans are in the front. Then when yeah. Dying Fetus plays, all the Terror fans are like a little bit skeptical, but they all like what they saw. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you gotta like yeah. Dying Fetus. That shit's crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's a, it's a, and it's and again, um, it's cool, and that's how it should be. I think you know, it's like a, you know, like you know, when you go to a family, it, no, there's a reunion. When you go to a family get together, mm -hmm. you know, it's different flavors in a room. It's all they all come from somebody. There's a, the grandmother and the grandfather somewhere, and then they got all the uncles and the aunts and the cousins, and then that's the same shit. You got to yeah. take it for what it is. You know, that's what we all are. Yep. We all come from this. The subculture stems from around the same people. That's right. Yeah. Benny Stigma. That's it. That's it. He's the one. We all came he's, from Benny Stigma. That's it. He's <laughs> fucking the Big Bang Theory is Stigma. It's we either came from that or we came from Keith Morris or some combination <laughs> of the two. Uh, well, I got one more about about the evolution of hardcore. You know, Madball is thirty years old almost. They're crazy. What 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 kind of changes, I guess, for the better or for the bad? Like what 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 have you seen that has kind of blown your mind recently that that you never thought you would see basically in hardcore? Well, you know what what I definitely seen recently I never thought I'd seen is not in a good thing, and I'm not a, a hater guy because hardcore is in a good place in a lot of ways with the the the, the outlets we have, the bands mm -hmm. we have, that the batch of bands. So it's nothing to do with that. What I think that I can't believe happening now is some of the disrespect to some of the older bands mm -hmm. for certain beliefs. Don't get me wrong. 
some of these older bands deserve it. They're asking for it because they're being assholes about it. But I also think sometimes now um, people got to look at it like, all right, when you at, at a, you had a family function, you have an old uncle. He might be saying some outdated shit. You know he's outdated. You know, at, at the end of the day, you know when you were younger, he would bring you a gift to your party. When he was younger, he he would give you a call. Oh, no, you know, he, he was kind of around but not but you know he was enough there but he has some beliefs you don't you don't agree with he's your elder he's connected to people that you love so you bite your tongue you take it for what it is like we know you can learn a lot from old people and there's also a lot of shit you you we learn not to do from old people right something to find in all and all that that's how they, I think some of the young people got to take some of these older people. I think I, the blatant disrespect is what I can't believe. It's what's bugging me out a little bit. And that's just not in hard courts and even like hip hop and just mm -hmm. like a younger generation in general talking to their OGs in a certain way. It's kind of crazy to me. So. Yeah. At, at some, like, I, I do understand, like, we're in a more progressive place now, especially in yeah. hardcore. Uh, but I do understand the idea of those people walked so that we can run. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's all I think a lot of these older guys want, but mm -hmm. they don't know how to say it that way. So yeah. it comes out in an ignorant way where, and like how we know where, Hey, well, you'll fight back when, when these younger guys know it, cause the younger generation is very bright. Look, you know that. So at mm -hmm. least take that with a little bit and be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, um, um, take one for the old guys and say, okay, I'll eat this one. It ain't much to eat. I'm not, not somebody saying go against your beliefs. Nobody's saying that fucking be a doormat. Absolutely not. Right. But take, you know, let them speak their mind and also don't hate on somebody for taking, it might take them a little longer to, 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 to learn how to walk in these new, in this new time. Mm -hmm. You know, I say certain slang words that nowadays ain't looked at alike. Well, guess what? I'm also, you know, almost 50 and it's a work in progress, like everything. Yeah. So you can't hate me, but you should acknowledge that I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Instead, people don't acknowledge when you're trying to do good. They just try to point out your, 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 your flaws. And that's the problem when motherfuckers should look at themselves before they look at anybody else. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that, you know. Uh, trying to be understanding of where everybody's at. You know, maybe we're not all there yet. Yeah, and we're never going to all be there. We're all in the same, we all be perfect, uh, symbiotic human being. That's fantasy. It don't work that way. Right. It don't. But you know how now you have your grandfather looking at a Facebook? Guess what? He may have not learned how to use his phone because he was like, I ain't learned that. Life. But somehow, long enough, deep enough, and enough people, now he has a Facebook. <laughs> You got to get my father fucking, oh, dude, show me Facebook in Spanish. These are dudes are 80 years old. <laughs> they don't even know English. So, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got to let people go take their time. You got to also understand. And if you're this new generation, you should be equipped with that little bit extra of, okay, I get it. You're an older model. I got to, I got to sit back and listen a little bit and just let them be you know what i mean just be patient a little bit yeah. be patient with us that's yeah. it i feel that i i i mean i can understand from both sides because i'm right there i'm a millennial yeah. i'm right there in the middle i just think that that's one thing not that they're wrong or just have some patience with some of us before you go right away thinking because i'm we're not all the same mm -hmm. you know we're not all the same and i know for a fact not all of the guys that people some of these people that people are getting accused of being certain things i know they're not it's just some of us are meatheads, so we don't know how to articulate <laughs> how some people want us to. So they already then they label you. You know, people assume with me because I don't speak like a fucking Webster dictionary that oh he's this 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 and that. Listen, anybody who really knows me knows. You know, I'm a family man. Mm -hmm. I don't. Cr I'm a real motherfucker. I never cross nobody, mm -hmm. and also people know don't fuck with me. So that's all I care about. You know, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel that and I see it, but uh, yeah. like and everything, I, it takes time. It takes understanding. Yeah, yeah, and I learned that too myself, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so like. And 
what what kind of advice would you have aside from being patient and and maybe showing you know I think mutual respect all around is what's going to get us there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. Even some of the older people being more patient with the younger. Absolutely. They have to. They have to. And well, if they don't, they should get the fuck out the way. Because guess what? We were those young guns and a lot of people talk shit on us when we came up. A lot of people were telling us, yeah, you too much hip hop in your music. I'm like hip hop. No, we're hip hop. We influence. We ain't fucking rap core. We never were. Yeah. We, he has a vibe. But that was the influence. People told us, I had people say, hold it down. What co- Real OGs telling me, oh, what the fuck's up with that? Yo, you guys should chill out with this hip hop shit. Nobody's going to even get it. These are the things that were told to us during these times for this record. And, you know, we were like, no, we don't care. You don't get it because they ain't your era. This right. is, you no, know, hold, this is how we talk. Well, whatever, that shit, whatever. That shit, I, that shit inspired generations of fucking yeah. music, man. You know, and it's like, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it is. And then we, I learned also, you know, like, you know, times change or whatever. Like I said, patience on both sides for sure. But definitely what I want the young, the, the younger generation to do is keep like, do, do a little homework, not just to be like, oh, so you can recognize us. No, do the homework because you come from some real deep, we all part of some real deep shit mm-hmm. that we can see our, you know, our Adam and Eve's still walking and playing on stages. So it's good to talk about it and let people know who the fuck they are because you can see them. Your stigma will probably be through your town in a fucking couple months. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ain't going to see Beatles coming through your fucking town. You ain't going to see Rush coming through your town. You ain't going to see Led Zeppelin coming through your town. But you're going to see Agnostic Front coming through your town. Yeah, that's something about hardcore that I, I love is that it's still such a young like genre almost that that we still see stigma we still i saw circle jerks three months ago exactly that's crazy and we should be glad and, and know that you know for us that's like oh i just saw the beatles oh i just saw led zeppelin i just saw acdc exactly yeah. you know that's who we're fucking seeing you know when you see stigma do you understand what that is that's like you know how, uh, sabbath is heavy metal well, stigma's new york Hall for roger Mm-hmm. The Jimmy Jimmy G's, you know, the, the blood clots. They, these people are like, you know, if you want to, you know, from the, you know, from the straight edge people to the this thing to the that. We have these motherfuckers still here. You mm-hmm. could you could Instagram these motherfuckers right now. <laughs> Send them a message. Yeah, you ain't in, where's Chuck Berry, you know, where's a fat's domino. It's like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like these OGs that aren't around. These guys are our, our guys are still there. And the dudes that we love. The, the mainstream loves the Metallicas, the Slayers, you name them. Well, guess who the fuck they were listening to? The Agnostic Front. That's they true. were listening to all these bands. It's just a fact. Yeah. It's just a fact. It's just what it is. So, you know, it's, take pr- learn the history so you could talk. When you talk your shit, you could talk it with some pride. You know what That's I mean? That's it. Know where, know where we come from. Yeah, yeah. Just so when you talk it, you could say it with fucking that heart, you know? Well, Hoya, this has been like such a fun time. I'm really happy that it worked out. We were able to jump on. And- yeah, I'm glad I was able to make, I told you I wanted to do it. So I had a gap of time now and I was glad we were able to jump on. So let me, let me ask you one last question before we go. What's your favorite city for beans and breakdowns? For beans and breakdowns. Yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> Montreal, it might have to be, I guess, you know, there's so many places. There's so many places, so many places. I had a lot of, um, I gotta say, you know, when you know we're talking coffee and we're talking a little bit of everything, well, we're at, the Bay Area got a good combo there. I was not expecting. I was not expecting some West Coast shit. What, what you were you were thinking? You know, usually all the New York cats they they just shout out New York. They're like, I got that thing over on Seventh Street. No, no, that's great. No, my favorite, my favorite coffee spot is a mainstream coffee spot. I'm um, downtown. I'm Sweet Leaf, right? Mm-hmm. They have a uh, a. Uh, uh, um, a fucking um, a, a mix they have. It's um, you know, it's like whatever fucking was something, and uh, it has um chicory and whatever, whatever. It's the, my my best ever favorite thing on the planet. But the Bay Area got a lot of good coffee and good shows, and it seems like you just it's like New York or pizza, mm-hmm. you know, literally every foot. There's some banging coffee and 
I don't know. It just seems like the underground and just music is big there too. It, yeah. it goes together a lot. That's why I say it. So I think like there, but um, but yeah, I go, I go, I go with the Bay Area on this one. I mean, Barrier, Bay Area hardcore is still strong. I feel like they just it's nonstop. Yeah. I see bands like Gulch, Drain, they're Tsunami. Stronger than, they're stronger than ever now. It's like crazy. East Coast, we have the Knock Looses, like that type of energy, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right now, out there is that other energy. Obviously, we got Terra doing that thing, but the, all the all the other bands, and then you know we had the and this side the Dre, you know, also the the the, the, the mind forces like repping, you know. But it's with that batch of West Coast, they all yeah. mix. So it's like these are the guys we got fighting for us. Like who we got in our bullpen? We got the mind force. We got this guy, that guy. You know? well, it's like Long Long Island's got a bunch of like Pain of Truth. Shout out Pain yeah, of Truth. Pain of Truth, Combust, all those bands. I'm you know I move all the bands. Yeah. Hang on. They're all dope. Uh, all that shit. All that shit. We back all that shit. But yeah, Bay Area, they they keep it and they keep it OG. Like they got that hardcore like section hate even has yeah. that hardcore punk. Yeah. But uh yeah. Bay Area is hard. They're hard. Yeah. I, I'm feeling the energy there, but like you said, all the bands you just named too, all the I'm 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 liking that. But you know, let's keep it going. Like, you know, let's, uh, you know, that's what I want to see. I want to see, I want to see the coast come up. I need the East coast to come up. Let's do it. Let's get the, I, I like the metalcore stuff. I, I play in a metalcore yeah. band, but deep down, I love that, that hard New York hardcore, that bouncy shit. Let's bring that shit back. And, uh, you know, and I think some of the, there's some new bands coming out like that mm-hmm. in the East coast. I think that that type of mix is coming back. You know what I mean? So like gridiron, you've been on gridiron. <laughs> Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Damn, that band is hard. Okay. Yeah, that's some cool shit. That's some cool shit. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're in a good place for music, man. I'm, I'm psyched on music, man. I'm yeah. psyched for, for the hardcore shit and the punk scene. Like, there's some good shit now. So. Yeah, let's keep it going. Well, oh, yeah. enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much for hanging out. Nah, nah, hell yeah. Good shit, man. Yo, good luck with everything. We'll talk soon, man. Let me know when it drops. Yo, you know, uh, go ahead and shout out where, where people can find you. Listen, already um smoking word TV on YouTube, smoking word TV on fucking Facebook and you know Spotify, the smoking word podcast, all over all that shit. Every media, anything, follow it. Every Tuesday we drop a new episode of the hard corner. It's basically the sports center of the underground. That's you it. know, for anybody you don't know, we cover metal, hardcore, graffiti, tattoos, anything that lives in the gutter, we fuck with it. So tap in. Even some drama sometimes. Yeah, you it's, know, like, it's like the gossip column. Yeah, yeah, but we got like fun gossip because, you know, we don't want, we have enough negativity in the world. We want to keep it fucking That's cracking. It. I mainly want to spread the word and let people know that, yo, you know, it ain't just about the metal guys and whatever. We got some shit in the, in the fucking hardcore and the punk motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. Well, so good and, shit. yeah, take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. Hey, bro. Have a good one. Later. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. Want to say the biggest thanks to Hoya for hanging out with me on the podcast. Be sure to follow what Hoya's got going on on the Smoking Word podcast, Smoking Word TV on YouTube to check out the Hard Corner. Like he said, there's a new episode every Tuesday. If you've enjoyed the episode, please subscribe and leave a review. You can also find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up.